Well, we're back. <coughs> and a cough right out of the gate. Live television. <coughs> Pardon me. So, we're going to talk about VA remainder entitlement tonight. What is VA remainder entitlement? Well, in the VA loan world, um, we have a, 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 a the VA loan product that allows a veteran to buy a home with no money down. We know that. And we know that today, as of 2023, I think, um, the VA home loan has no guarantee cap on it. A vet qualified a vet can buy a house for as much money as they qualify for. A million, two million, ten million. I think the <clears throat> the highest um, valued home right now, or at least the last time I checked, was about nine million dollars in California in Northern California. But that said, let's talk about the normal people. <laughs> the folks that got to buy a house to live in with their family that's not going to cost a million dollars or more. So there's something called VA remainder entitlement. And it allows a veteran to buy a home. Let's say that you, uh, you were stationed in Tennessee and you bought a house in Tennessee and it cost you $350,000. Now, I got to tell you, a house in Tennessee for $350 out in the woods is probably a pretty nice house. Nevertheless, that's what you bought it for. But you get PCS orders, you get orders to move to a new location, and now you got to try and sell the house. But you have the valuation done by the real estate agent that you brought on board to help you get the house sold, and you find out you can't sell the house for as much as you owe on it. You've only been there a year or two, you got a short PCS stay, and you got to move off to a new location. What are you going to do? Well, you're probably going to end up renting the house out. And given the market, uh, the way the market is across the United States, you're probably going to be able to rent it for at least your mortgage payment, which is good. You might even make some positive cash flow on it. And that's good too. <clears throat> but you got this VA loan and you bought the house with no money down. But now let's say that your PCS orders take you to, oh, I don't know, Glendale, Arizona. And your wife says, I don't want to rent. I want to buy. And you're scratching your head and you're saying, but honey, we only have one VA loan. Well, that's true and not true. There's a process within the, within the mechanism of the VA loan that allows the veteran to actually have multiple running, simultaneously running VA home loans. Yep. As long as you can qualify and as long as what's called the remainder entitlement portion is there, you can actually buy another home using your VA loan with no money down. So let's say you bought that $350,000 home in um, Tennessee and you had to rent it out. And you come, to, you, you come to Glendale, Arizona, you're stationed at Luke Air Force Base. And the average price out here is running around $390 to $410, somewhere in that area. And, and you're saying, what are we going to do? Well, you're going to use your remainder entitlement. There's a calculation, and I'm not going to go into it here because it's kind of complex. But I've been doing this for a long time, my wife and I, and I know that formula. And any competent lender would know that formula. And you're going to be able to, assuming your credit is still good and nothing has gone wrong with, your, with your, um, uh, the house you left back, back in Tennessee. It's rented out. It's be, doing fine and you want to qualify for a new home. So let's say you come upon a, a home and as long as it's priced at or under 416,000, I think it's like $548, 
as long as it's priced under that, you can buy that home with no money down. Yeah, it's called remainder entitlement. So you get a second simultaneously running VA home loan. It's done all the time, but a lot of people don't know it because their real estate agents aren't smart enough and, and I shouldn't say smart enough, not read in enough on the VA uh, purchase process, the VA home loan process, or their lenders aren't read in on the VA remainder entitlement piece. You know, uh, I've shared this with you before, but the um, Blue Water Navy bill that was passed in I think 2018, maybe it was 20, I don't remember. But I'm the, I'm the guy that actually ramrodded that bill back through Congress set up properly. There was, there was a, the, the original writing of that bill had accidentally stripped away remainder entitlement. Now that would have been devastating to the, um, to the VA home loan and to us as veterans. So, now let's say you're also, let's say this, let's say that you're a veteran who bought a house in Tennessee at your last duty station, and you're also a Purple Heart recipient, <clears throat> still on active duty, and you get PCS orders to Luke Air Force Base, and you want to buy this $416,000 home <clears throat> with no money down, but because you're a Purple Heart recipient, you don't have to pay the funding fee. Yep, that's the way that works. That happened also as a result of the revised bill that me and my colleagues helped redraft when that bill was going through the House and the Senate. So, you're a, a, a veteran, who, or an active duty service member or veteran, you're military, you bought a home in Tennessee for $350,000. You can't sell it because you don't have enough equity in it. You don't want to write a check to sell it. So you rent it out. You're probably getting a positive cash flow out of it. And now you want to buy a new home here in Glendale, Arizona at Luke Air or near Lake Luke Air Force Base. And you're a recipient, God love you, thank you for your service, of a Purple Heart. You're eligible to have the funding fee waived and all you're going to pay are the closing costs and depending on the kind of market, if it's a seller's market or buyer's market, you could end up asking the seller to cover your closing costs. You could also end up making sure as you go through the process of hiring your buyer agent under the new NAR rules and in that buyer broker agreement you all agreed that you would compensate or see that your real estate agent got compensated some amount of money, 2%, 3%, whatever the number was. And, but, and you said, but don't, find, don't show me any properties. You said this and you wrote it and put it in writing. You said, don't show me any properties that, that are on the market where the sellers have refused to compensate um, the buyer agent my buyer agent. Well, now you're you're boy you're in the catbird seat. That's for that's that's what you are. You're in the catbird seat. Because you you rented out your house in Tennessee, you came out here to Luke Air Force Base, you found a real estate agent uh, that you, uh, that you were able to work with and you signed the buyer broker agreement and you agreed to make sure that your buyer agent gets some amount of money and you told your buyer agent, don't show me properties where the seller is not willing to compensate the buyer agent. So you got all those bases covered. And then in the negotiations, you said, and let's see if the buyer can ask the seller to cover some of the buyer's closing costs, maybe all of them. So now, you got the house rented in Tennessee. You found a house out here for $416,548. And 
the seller has agreed to pay the broker fee that you promised to your buyer agent that you'd make sure he got or she got, and the seller in negotiations agreed to pay your closing cost. Well, I'll tell you what, that's sitting in the catbird seat from my perspective. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of heads up on what remainder entitlement is all about. And if you want a little more information about that, just drop remainder in the comments or DM me and I'll happily, we'll set up a Zoom call and I'll, and I'll go over this whole complex formula with you and help you out. It doesn't matter if you're here in, in Arizona, Phoenix, and any other state. I don't care where you are. Uh, I'm retired Air Force. My wife and I have been doing this for well over three decades. Always happy to help out a fellow veteran. And, and I'm more than happy to set up a Zoom call with you. Just be sure you put a, a comment or a DM in there, remainder, and I'll get right back to you. Well, listen, it was a short one, but I felt remainder entitlement something really, really worth talking about. So you guys have a great evening and have a great Friday. And I'll see you on the flip-flop.